new microphone on so hopefully the audio is a lot better hopefully cut back on some of the background around noise in my videos because i'm a lot i live in town so i'm around cars and trucks and boats and kids screaming and you name it but uh it's kind of bulky i wish it was a little bit more low profile but it looks pretty good To today's trading session, I want to talk about the oil futures that are negative 37 for expiration date tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Why it's not as bad as people think. The reason is they're futures. They're they have an expiration date kind of like options, except in a lot of cases these companies take delivery of these commodities such as oil, and these companies are like say airliners. They get oil cheaper uh, on a futures contract so they when a price of oil rises they're locked in at that contract and get can get oil a lot cheaper and uh, I'm gonna read this straight off of CNBC app to give you a better definition I don't trade futures so I, I got a general idea how it works but uh, I'm gonna go more in depth with what CNBC said today futures contracts ultimately are contracts for physical delivery of the underlying commodity or security which is oil in this particular case. While some people in the market speculate on contracts, others are buying and selling because they have use for the commodity itself near the contract's expiration. Traders just start buying the next month's futures. What this means is tomorrow, when the futures are expired, they're just buying up futures for next month, which is trading at $22 a barrel. The reason why it's negative 37 is because in the situation we are, oil companies want to get rid of this oil. So they're basically giving it away for free. Those who stay in the position to the final day are typically buying the physical commodity. So you can sell your futures contract for a profit or a loss, or you can actually take delivery. Unlike options, you don't take delivery of anything unless it's the stock. You don't have, so if you bought 50 barrels of futures and you didn't cancel it out, those 50 barrels you have to take delivery literally at your house a truck's going to show up with oil the west texas intermediate crude contract that fell more than 100 percent on monday is for may delivery it expires tuesday with the coronavirus pandemic leading to unpre unprecedented demand loss and with storage tanks quickly filling up there is no demand for this oil contract expiring tuesday that's why it turned negative, meaning producers would pay to get this oil off their hands because there is no one that needs that crude oil this week with the country shut down. Futures contracts trade by the month. The contracts for June delivery was 16% lower at 21 per barrel. And next month is right now is like a 22, 22.85, something like that. So it's just for this contract. Oil is not negative. It was just the futures contract. For anybody that's confused, um, it doesn't really have a huge effect on the market. Yes, it drove the market down today, but it's not anything that we have to really worry about in the next coming weeks or months or worry about it damaging the economy. So uh, I just wanted to clear that up before I got into today's trading session. Just out here at Pensacola Pier, hanging out, enjoying the sunset, and uh, riding my motorcycle around a little bit. Um, definitely another difficult trading day. Took more of a loss. I'm still in those trades. Apple is still setting up on a pullback. And uh, I'm just hoping that uh, tomorrow we can get a pop. I just got a notification on my phone that uh, oil or uh, stock futures were up for tomorrow. Even though we've got a lot of time left, that can constantly change. You know, my big thing I want to put on this channel is no bullshit information, no hysteria. The media hypes everything up just like they did with the oil. Oh my gosh, oil is negative 37. It's all over the media. But then you realize it expires tomorrow, and then everybody goes on about their business, and it will be forgotten about within the next couple of days. As you can see here, early on into the market, Apple was down 4.10, about three minutes before the opening bell. Uh, here in Pensacola, it opens at 8.30 because of the time change. But uh, yeah, it definitely wasn't looking good for us off the bat. And if you look on over here to uh, the CNBC app, 
you can see that the uh, Dow futures were down over 500 points, S&P down, NASDAQ futures down. What I was really looking for was a bounce for the uh, deal on the small business loan program. And I was really looking for a bounce, even though oil was keeping the market down, stocks really weren't pushing that far down. So I was really hoping a deal went through. I didn't really see anything today of anything going through, unfortunately. Although we did get a little bit of a bounce uh, up to 360 right at the open. And Apple was really all over the place. And I just couldn't really figure out which direction it was going to go. And uh, we would pull out or add to my position. And as you can see here, as I scroll down, even though the market's down 500 points, you know, nothing was really down far, you know, a dollar or two. And so that was like a good sign for me. So I'm sitting here waiting for a deal that never happened, unfortunately. And uh, it's getting a lot of mixed signs. Some Apple pop and it drop right back down. And, you know, everything's kind of slow. It's super choppy market. I apologize for the poor quality uh, of the screenshot here. I was at work and I, you know, can't really do a screen recording while I'm at work. So I'm just trying to use my phone the best I can. You can see here. Apple uh, trying to do something as soon as the market opened and uh, it, see here it failed and then uh, it broke out of this channel and what got me excited is the market's kind of trying to come up there's possibly a deal coming out and then Apple makes this huge run after it breaks out of this channel so I get you know super excited okay here we go this is our opportunity you can see here my next uh, clip Apple still making a run. Everything's looking good. It looks like it's trying to close this gap over here on the left side of the screen. We're above the moving averages. We broke out of this channel. RSI is up. Volume is up. We got a tiny little pullback, and this pullback actually added to the position on my large account. It looked super promising, but Apple just could not hold up today, and uh, this breakout ended up failing and uh, coming all the way back down to the open. Holding this position, but uh, even though we're down on this trade, we're still up $323 in the challenge account. So uh, I just need to do a little bit better job, honestly, and uh, see if we can uh, get this trading turned around.